It is with great pleasure, honor, and privilege that I participate in this meeting to celebrate the life and achievement of Professor Abu Salam. I thank the organizers for inviting me. The letter inviting me to speak on this, I was told to talk about the role of RCTP in Africa. And since Salam founded the RCTP, you cannot separate RCTP from Salam. So I will start by first give some correction of Salam and later on talk about several activities RCTP is doing in Africa. So the presentation will be treated in a firm way. First, Professor Salam, mentor and teacher. Professor Salam, RCDP, and development of physics and mathematics in Africa. Then I'll also talk a little bit about Professor Salam, a candidate for the post of Director General of UNESCO, an epilogue, because uh, we are talking about science on this, but there's a few things uh, most of you don't know about his attempt to become the Director General of UNESCO and why he did not get it, because I was also part of it, trying to do it. I first met Professor Salam in 1959 at Imperial College as a graduate student in the Department of Mathematics, then located at the Hospital Building, South Coast City. He was Professor of Applied Mathematics and Head of Applied Mathematics Section of the Department of Mathematics. In those days, theoretical physics is considered as uh, mathematics. And for the head of the department at that time was Professor Harry Jones, who was a professor of uh, condensed matter physics. I attended Professor Salam's lectures on group theory and fundamental particles. It was a very popular course for almost all postgraduate students and young lecturers in theoretical physics at various colleges in the University of London. His lectures were brilliant, insightful, and contained many new ideas, particularly his classification of the then known fundamental particles using group theoretical methods and with his cooperator, Professor Matthews. He was confident and inspiring, and I remember him always well brag gone in teaching. He used the largest auditorium in the, in the hospital building, yet it's always full, and many students had to stand during his lectures. I was the only African student attending his course. He became interested in my academic work and welfare. He, his wife invited my wife several times for afternoon, afternoon tea in their house. Professor Salam was religious and devoted Muslim. He was encouraged and inspired by his maternal uncle, who was an excursionist and a pioneer and media missionary in Ghana, specifically in the town where I was born and grew up. It was, I, I've been informed 
by the mission in Ghana that was his uncle, who established the first Ahmadiyya Muslim Escape Service Ghana. And even the, chair, the land for the council of the mosque and Islam school where the town was donated by the country church. Though Professor Salam was a devout Muslim, he did not discuss his religious beliefs with his students, colleagues, and employees. He was very kind and philanthropist, and spent his fund assisting some schools in Africa. In 1960, Professor Salam sent one of his graduate students from Pakistan to teach physics and mathematics in high school in Ghana for about two years. And this is Professor Rashid Sidang here. I tell you, he was very happy in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Before he came to Imperial College to throw this thing. Professor Salam and, and Professor Jones recommended me to, so when I decided to go to Princeton, to go so there wrote a letter now. So I went to Princeton to continue my studies. After my PhD, I returned to Ghana. Professor Salam wrote me in 1967 that he, he was initiating a new program called Next Matter Physics at International Center for Theoretical Physics, and that he had, which he has accepted in 1904, and he wanted me to participate. It was being uh, headed, led by Zerman, Lindquist, and March. I really accepted it, and since 1907, I've been visiting ICP regularly without a break. As first as uh, we said the bit. Yes, so Yes, without the break, so. As, as far as a participant, associate, senior associate, court director, and since 1996, as a member of RCTP Council. This picture was taken for the staff at uh, RCTP in 1990 to celebrate the staff who have stayed in RCTP for 25 years law service. And I happened to be at RCTP at that time and Professor Salam asked me to join the group. So we have the head of uh, Professor Salam himself, uh, the head of the library, and the assistant, and the coordinator of uh, Connect Matter Physics. And uh, it was, uh, so those people have been there before. Professor Salam, as I've said before, became interested in me, and Several times I act as his special assistant when dealing with African matters. For instance, in 1992, he invited me to present him on the Scientific Council of the International Institute for Theoretical and Applied Physics at the University of uh, Iowa State University, Ames, US, which was established on the model of RCP, which and, and we had the chair as. Uh, Lee, of which that center after a few years could not succeed. Now, I want to talk about Professor Salam and development of physics and my plant African. It was the first, the RCP was the first institution to play a crucial role in positively developing mathematics and physics in Africa through human capacity development, various areas of physics and mathematics on the continent. This has helped African scientists keep active research whilst staying in their home countries. Every year, about 6,000 scientists visit RCDP for advanced training and research. About 600 of them are from Africa. The center also organizes several training courses, workshops, and 
conferences in Africa. Many African physicists study and do research in ten laboratories and research in ten There's also the RCDP, IEA, Sandwich Program for PhD in Physics and Mathematics and rate areas which African physicists and metricians had benefited from. And this is known as state sandwich training program in the education program which is called STEP. In this program, a student who has registered for a PhD in a developing country is chosen for three visit to RCP for a total of about 18 months. Usually having a course supervisor at in RCP or in RCP as a center. The students receive the PhD from their home institutions. The idea behind the STEP program is to minimize brain drain while providing opportunity for collaboration and access to top facility. RCTP has established several affiliated centers project and network, including laser atomic molecular network in Africa, and has helped train several senior African physicists and nutrition who are holding important positions in Africa. Each region of Africa is represented. In each of them, one can find associates and form associate of the center. These elites play an important role in designing the scientific policy of their countries, and many hold important academic and research positions. The immediate commissioner for science, for science and technology of African Union was RCP associate and former director of RCTP Affairs Center in his home country, Benin. The first initiative which ASEP did was trying to form, apart from capacity building in the home country, to build some institution. So if Professor Salam encouraged the uh, formation of Afri African uh, physical society. And these two places, uh, the first African society in Africa was organized by Professor Salam. The idea took place on the 26th of August 1983. One third of African countries, visitors, scientists, and CCP, had a meeting and resolved to form the society to be known as SAPA, out of concern for the flowing, a concern for the flowing, the poor state of physics and materials in Africa, great as scientific and technology gap between the industrial and industrial country in Africa, and aware that mathematics and physics are the basis for the creation of modern industries. The, the idea for, to form the SAPA received overwhelming support from Professor Salam, and he agreed to host the former Nogret meeting at RCP on October 1984, during RCP 20th anniversary celebration. The integration also will have a workshop known as the State of Physics and Mathematics in Africa. This was organized under the portrait of Professor Salam, with me as the chairman of the panel committee. At that meeting, we have the guest of honor was uh, Dr. G. Adrati, the then Italian Prime Minister and the former Foreign Minister, attended the meeting. 
Dr. Adrati was a very good friend of Salam and also RCTP. And he stressed the importance of science and technology and innovation for system development. And he was happy about the creation of South African physical administration in, in RCTP. He made a very important statement, which always concerned with what Salam also was been preaching about. And here, this was said, the population affected by the food and health program must be helped, but they must also face these problems within a wider context, which will give them a tool for itself to develop. That there's besides the immediate project help, another kind of help is needed, essential for part of our civil society, the formation of research, te researchers, technicians, and experts. And this too was a very, very important statement, which in line with what Sam was talking about. Immediately after this, uh, as a Dr. Adretti substantially increased the amount of money requested by President Salam for the government for RCTP, and this enabled RCTP to establish the Office of External Activities and also to us. And uh, Adretti also pleaded that uh, he, and that uh, other development partners and donor agencies to assist particular Africa in the area of science, technology, and research so that Africa will be able to also contribute to the development of science. And this was the picture with me, and I was sitting on the front of with Salam, and then uh, this is uh, our year Director General Hans Briggs. The picture was done by, and this is the, was the Director of Daisy in Germany. And there's another picture from the open of this. Uh, this. On that meeting, it was observed that among the programs contributing to the post of physics and mathematics in Africa were inadequate student knowledge, shortage of teachers, lack of critical mass for effective research, poor experimental facilities, shortage of test books and journals, and inadequate international among African metricians and with the rest of the world. A strategy for this program was discussed and adopted for information. Professor Salam took a very active part in this deliberation. As then, with, with support from RCTP and personal funds from Professor Salam, SAPO organized in 1986 a Pan-African workshop in Nairobi, Kenya, on humanization of curriculum in physics, mathematics, and computer science at a tertiary level of education in Africa. It was the first kind, it was first of its kind in Africa, at the, and at the same workshop, training in the, pro in the production of low-cost equipment for education in science in Africa was initiated. It was a f in 1987, we also uh, support initiated with the support of RCTP application of remote science and meteorology in Africa, which is a series of workshops to synthesize the physical science community in African policy maker and government on the issue related to climate and the environment. The, the first workshop took place in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, at the time one part of that part of Africa is from one of the most devastating drafts of 20th century. 
SAPOR had been organizing African regional colleges on renewable energy, known as Commercy College on Renewable Energy, since 1987, 1986, in Ghana. Some of, some of the participants of this uh, workshop have heard, and some are still holding important positions such as ministers in the charge of energy, members of energy commission, research and research in energy studies, technology and innovation in their countries. With the collaboration of ICTP, SAPAM achieved great success by organizing conference and workshop, building links among physicists working in Africa and building links with physicists worldwide on organizing public engagement SAPAM played a very leading role in Africa during the celebration of the year 2005, International Year of Physics. Because of this, African Union granted to the society an observer status. The relative success of SAPAM led the formation of Edward Bouchet Institute in 1988 at RCP on the suggestion from Professor Salam. After his death in 1996, it was renamed Edward Boucher Abdul Salam Institute, which is an, an USA African ISP initiative. And this is uh, uh, if from this we have the, uh, the African school. After his death, ABC played a very important part and some mechanism for synergies and technical cooperation between Africa, Africa diaspora, and American physicists, scientists, engineers, and the aim, the aim of this is the enhancement of the part of science and to control on system development of the countries on the continent, and also to increase the technical manpower pool work in Africa by starting a training of PhD students from African countries. In order to achieve its objectives, EBESE periodically organizes international scientific and technical conferences, workshops on technical meetings, which are hosted by universities in many African countries and the USA. These conferences These conferences promote cooperation between Africa, America, and this and at, at the sixth meeting of Ibasi, which was as, which was as, and the general assembly of SAPA, which was attended by over 200 physicists from over Africa on 24 June 2007 at Intebe Laboratory, Cape Town, South Africa, to observe that SAPA should be transformed and be known as African society. So uh, you can see that the idea of having <coughs> African Physical Society was, also was born from uh, RCTP. That is, uh, Afri a professional body was needed to become an, an advocate for physics and mathematics at the African Union in the government of Free of African Country among the United Universities, research and so forth. It started our grand conferences and here, is a picture with uh, the, pres I, the president of the African Society and the president of uh, Italian Physical Society at the celebration of 45 anniversary of ICTP in Tuesday. This show how SAPAM is trying to, with the help of ICTP, trying to organize activity with the rest of the world and we have a good cooperation with Italian Physical Society, American Physical Society, and, and, and Institute of Physics and UK. <coughs> so
So uh, after a uh, existence of the software, it was decided that this had got to be formed. And then we, as I said, a society for Africa was formed. SAPAM, as they say, this African society was formed, also decided to have an agenda, which, uh, a, a, which we say a free online peer review international journal, dedicated to publishing all branches of sprint and theoretical physics, which emphasizes on originality and relevant to basic on the center of computer physics. And, this, and uh, it's not clear, this also, the journal is also has this head office and the true office attached to it's been interesting. And it's been helping to also for the big contribution that has done by CDP on that impact in Africa. This general emphasizes the uniting and relevant of basic science and uh, to confess and retreat this. It's a, it's a, this African society, so from uh, initial, we are from SAPAM, now we have a, a, a base, then there's another revolution where we also now have now African Physical Society, which also came from, uh, with the help of ICTP, and this picture was taken at the integration of the SAPAM. This, um, this was done in uh, Dakar with the president of uh, Senegal taking part on members of uh, Laser Atomic Morocco Network team also there. And uh, it was a very successful meeting. And the president, at that time, the president of, Africa, of uh, Senegal hinted at that that it's going to establish science without borders. It's going to spend about a lot of money to help science without borders and try to flow also activity which RCP. So the president was so happy and informed his other all, all colleagues and OU that uh, they should also try and do what RCP is doing and having RCTP in uh, the real countries. Uh, as of the same NATO, it might be here that uh, this was very, uh, this conference in uh, which uh, African fiscal was formed and which was then was uh, also attended by so many from, uh, from Arab, South, North Africa to South Africa, and our colleague from member of the base of America were also present. It worth mentioned here that a uh, African fiscal society played a leading role through the government of Ghana for UNESCO Executive Board to endorse 2015 as the Year of Light and the United Nations to proclaim 2015 as the Year of Light. Because one idea to, to, uh, to, to have the to, to, to have International Year of anything, you need to have a government to propose it first as United UNESCO and United Nations. So they approached the uh, European Physical Society, approached African Physical Society, and, uh, and the African Society approached the government of Ghana, and Ghana government placed this into the agenda of UNESCO, which was well adopted, and they went to United Nations, and United Nations also in acceptable. So without the uh, important role played by African Free Society, it might be very difficult to have got into nature of life. Because of this, too, we have Africa, African Free Society had received a, um, a request from International Commission of Ac Acoustics that uh, they is going to uh, have 2019s as international year of light. And they would like African Free Society to play a similar role so that uh, we, ha we have uh, another thing coming. Another important role which has helped Africa is the formation of African Academy of Sciences. 
formation of the Academy of Sciences also originated from RCTP in the year 1985. It was during the integration of the word to us that a, a, when Prosalam organized regional meetings for scientists participating in the integration of this, Prosalam took active part in this African regional meeting. It was during this meeting that I dared to form African Academy of Science involved. He gave his strong and more moral and financial support to make it a reality. And so the Salam has not only helped actual CDP only to train people, it has also helped in the establishment of uh, institutions for which will make it possible for to sustain what we're doing. There are so many uh, initiatives which RCTP have done and which has helped Africa, science, and math and physics. After a very successful program of uh, RCTP and then a African School Society, RCTP, Professor Salam decided that uh, he wanted to be Director General of UNESCO because uh, he, he has a strong belief that science, as we've been, we've been saying before, was a common human heritage. And he wanted to, uh, Professor wanted to apply the successful model of ICP to UNESCO. Hence, his request for post of data general he wanted to establish several ICT centers in the main developing countries and place science, technology, and innovation on a high agenda in developing countries. He believed that the development gap between countries in the north and south is in the south was basically a manifestation of science and technology gap. Professor Salam made me his uh, campaign manager to vote for the African vote. We spent about 10 days soliciting for votes for him at UNESCO head office in Paris. He received several and massive support from many developing countries who wanted him to be data general, particularly countries in Africa. Unfortunately, for his, for his country, Pakistan, refused to endorse his candidature at UNESCO as a board, based on political and religious ground. Because of this, his candidature was therefore not placed on at the general conference for election to the post of data general. Because in your school, principle is that uh, he should be nominated by a member. Ghana government even offered to sponsor for the Salam at the data general. But since Pakistan has refused to do that, they find it difficult to also support him because if they don't want to have a political problem with the government of Pakistan. Pakistan government rather decided to nominate a retired army general 
who eventually lost. This really makes Salam very disappointed man. On uh, what from what uh, Salam contribution to uh, not, uh, Professor Salam would, would have been very pleased to know that his vision of establishing RCTP centers in developing countries was being realized with a granting by UNESCO General in November 2015, a UNESCO Category 2 status to four institutions, in Brazil, China, Mexico, and Rwanda, which will bear the name of RCTP. And also there's another fifth one, which is coming on at uh, Izmir in Turkey. So his dream is, though he didn't get it, his dream is being realized. Also, some years after the death of a Salal, while I was uh, attending a board meeting, of International Atomic Energy Agency, Board of Governors Vienna, of which Professor Salam was also a, a, a former governor. Pakistani official approached me and asked me that, that though Pakistan government, uh, as a Muslim country, does not approve the mounting of human images and bust, it will, whoever, no object if Professor Salam's bus will be mounted at RCTP. It, uh, mounted at our year board of government meeting, and uh, he would like the RCTP to facilitate it. So uh, I already discussed with the Professor Bernard of Clare that uh, it's, it's still possible because. In the RCTP, in the IEA, they have uh, Baba, uh, Madame Kure, Kachatov, uh, pictures, uh, bus and uh, Manta there. And personal government also said that they would like their own uh, person uh, also to be there. And, uh, and this, I think, is possible. And uh, I would like the RCTP to initiate to propose to IEA Board of Governor so that a uh, for some Abdul Salam will probably be honored also at, RC, at IEA by having his bus put on the IEA Board of Governor as the North people. At that in contact with the Pascal official, they said if in the amount involved will be borne by Pakistani government. So the Pascal government didn't support him for being the Attorney General now, now but they find that he uh, reached a point where he should be honored for his. So this idea, which I think we should, the best we can do to honor in IEA, because IEA is for the Atom for Peace, or Youth Science for Peace, and Salam was using science for peace and for humankind. So it is right order that uh, we try and also find a way of putting honoring him as international atomic agency board of governor so that uh, it will remind the people about the work Professor Salam has done for the whole world. Our, and I think this is uh, a, a project which we should be talking about and then so with this now, I uh, just yes, wish to thank uh, Professor Salam and the organizers because through Professor Salam now, I've been able to contribute into the world, particularly, and not, what I'm doing is maybe personal, but through most people in Africa have reached certain position, through staying in their country in Africa and then 
use going to have uh, acid to work. And this has been able to contribute immensely to the health. And particularly, more, use my own as an example, I've been able to stay in Ghana, when visit RCTP to work and contribute to science and also development of science, not only in the world. There's also, as I've said, I've been also governor of IEA. Without acid, this would not be possible. I've been currently I'm the vice president of International Union of Pure and Applied Physics. And also, I've been able to become the president of African Society and contribute to United Nations, like uh, the series completely writing a, a book for them, co author of a book for them, a comprehensive study of nuclear weapons and also advisor to the nation, and so many things which I will not be able to achieve if uh, uh, I, I RCP was not there. So I wish to take this opportunity for to thank uh, the Mullah of Professor Salam and RCTP for making it possible for me to come to Africa and contribute in not a small way to the development of physics and mathematics in Africa, and also the science policy, not only in Ghana and Africa, but in the whole world, in the sense that uh, I've been working at a high level in the nation. And this also admits it is possible that uh, in, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the year of an international year of physics, the Ghana government thought is that uh, what I've done was well, that uh, they also put uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, and then a very important rule. And so in the year 20, they, they said from a contribution to science, they also have a government, a personal sound, which they put 2006. And I think without RCTP, I don't think this would have been possible for me. And only last year, about in April or so, CNN also make a, a program, half an hour program on me, which was broadcast African Voices. And this I owe to RCTP for giving me opportunity to contribute to science while still working in uh, Africa. And this I've done to many other people. So thank you very much. Oh, yes. OK. I know a little bit of the background. I. Um, I had the pleasure of taking my father to meet the then Prime Minister of Pakistan, uh, Junaidu, when he was applying for the candidacy of the Director General. Yes. And of course, if you remember that time, there was a lot of controversy around the, the uh, UNESCO role. Yeah. The UK had come out, the US was very I unsupported. Supporting him, yes. But my father had first been in to see Mrs. Thatcher, who was then Prime Minister yeah. of the UK, and she had told him, if you become Director General, I will bring the UK back into UNESCO. Mm -hmm. That gave him a tremendous boost. Mm. With your support in Africa, mm. he got a lot of support, of course, of Italy, etc. Again, he got a lot of support. But the, pri the president of Pakistan, Janejo, who was staying at the Hilton Hotel in London, I took my father to meet him. And he said, and my father said, I have a perfect solution for you. You go to UNESCO and you say, if you want an administrator, we have a candidate who is a retired army yeah, general. Yeah, yeah. And if you want a scientist, you have Abdul Salam. And so this is a very elegant solution for you as Pakistan because it's Asia's turn to have a, uh, a director general. And the response of the prime minister was, I personally can see with that, the president can see with that, but because of your religious beliefs, we cannot promote your application any further. And that was the end of the meeting. And. It, 
no one ever knows what the cause of my father's illness was. But the, after that, as Francis he said, with. he was extremely disappointed yeah. because for him, that was a perfect platform to yeah. bring science and technology yeah. back to the developing countries. Yeah. And that was just a small little insight uh, yes. that I wanted to add. To. Yeah, definitely, because I was, uh, after that, I sat in a car t going to airport with him from Paris, you know, Scorfield to Tracy. And uh, in fact, that was the beginning of, of his sickness because he was so disappointed. Because he was so, he thought that he'd be able to make science for the whole world. And he so believed that, uh, and he was the point of getting it. All what he needed was the, for the Pakistan government to say that, even if you don't want to cry, I've kept quiet by not nominating somebody. Because if you have nominated, the Ghana government was prepared to nominate him. But when they put a candidate, a Pakistan government put a candidate there, the Ghana government now don't want to have a conflict with a Pakistan government because they can't, if the Pakistan government is nominated with somebody else, they could not. So that thing was so disappointed. And this was 1987. And seeing that, that met a military. He started uh, going down and uh, this more or less. Uh, so you're definitely right. May I also just make one other point, and I apologize for you. I wanted to make this last night, but obviously we ran out of time during my speech last night. And that was the other thing about my father, that many of you know that all the prizes that he ever won in his life, he gave the money straight back to further prizes to encourage students yes. in developing countries. Yes. So whether it's the Maxwell Prize, the yes. Atoms for Peace Prize, the Barcelona Award, all those went straight back. Yeah. And the greatest prize for him, of course, was the Nobel. And what did he do? The minute we got back to London after the Nobel ceremony, he set up a charity in London, yeah. which he named after his parents, called yeah. the Muhammad Hussain, Hajra Hussain, his mother and father, Nobel Talent Fund. And that money was invested, and the proceeds of that money was to encourage secondary school education in developing countries, starting off in Pakistan and India. And I'm pleased to say that that small charity still exists to this day. I'm the chairman of it, and I'm responsible for dispersing some of that money to the brightest students in the most rural parts of India and Pakistan, just as the other Salam story. And that's just another example I wanted to leave with you, because it's something we as a family have never talked about. My father never talked about it during his lifetime. But I just wanted people to know that that's another example of my father's contribution back for science at the most basic level in developing countries. Thank you. And as you said, that uh, I know some of the money for secrets go to Ghana, Sierra Leone, Gambia. In fact, most of his prize money, as I know, because I was very close with him because more or less, uh, more or less his special assistant for African affairs. So he discussed some of these things with me. And uh, he was so much taught that he wanted something to be done. So he really got the prize. The first people to, to send some money to say, his school, for to go to secret school level. And he also encouraged uh, women education. People were definitely he did. Remember, I see the people doing the term. You even make sure that uh, women, instead of 40 a year they give to women for entering there, women are given special groups that uh, they take older women. Why men can be 40 or 35 to 40, women, they give the crazy age of 40, 40, 50. They allow them to go and have the baby and come back to continue their career. So special concession has been made in ICTP for women. So he was also involved in gender issues. And uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.